<laughs> I got a new boot panel. Welcome to episode 24, part 2. Let's go fit the boot. Okay, I like that. So there's what we've got to replicate. That shouldn't be too bad to do, what do you think? It's pretty much just straight metal with a fold in it. So we flatten that out, draw around on our sheet and see what we can do. Okay, repair piece then for the bottom of the tub already looking better. We'll have to repair that lip there, slightly damaged. That's easy to do again with some sheet. So a lip repair here. Try and get that replicated like that. Then we'll do a butt weld with a one mil butt weld clamps at the top. And that should do that piece. And then all we've got to do then is graft this repair edge into it from this piece. So a little bit of jigsaw, but not too bad. It's not like a mammoth task. Let's get right on cutting some sheet steel. Okay, with that section flattened out, I'm now we're going to get the tin snips, just cut that first shape. We're going to do it in two halves, so this first piece will have this right angle bend, which is very easy to form. We'll just use the hand formers for that. Just remember to put that tag on it. So we're going to make the first piece, the biggest piece, and actually install that in. I'm going to offer them up as two separate components of just about enough steel left I'm on my last sheet anyway that on top of there it's flattened out but you have to we'll have to knock the curve shape into it but it's pretty straightforward this tin snips on cut that out now 
Okay, I'm going to use my panel folding machine to get a really sharp fold line on this. So up we go, locked into place, and then pull on the handle, and we'll get a nice edge on it like that. Let's go and let's go and offer that up. So that's the Clark panel folder. Comes in handy. Just lock your piece in there. Away we go. Okay, the great thing about this now with that right angle fold. Because we left the end of the sills all open, we didn't do any spot welds because we anticipated things happening around this wheel tub area. So between the sill and the inner sill, and then the lower lip of the floor pan and the sill, there, you just got to let the exposure come in. Okay, because of that, it meant that you can use that right angle now and it'll slot between goes in very nicely look it grabs it and now we just finger and thumb or two thumbs together and push our curve in with our, our using our thumbs so we start to get that curved piece and that's do you know what we're 50 percent of the 50 percent of the way there in in like 15 minutes how about that for a big transformation so really effectively the damage on the inner housing in this what looked like could have been a tricky repair is actually really easy if you can open up the gap between your sills and your outer sill and your inner sill now you might be doing your own restoration and you've not got that far yet but if you can split them apart it just means that it makes for a better fit because this grabs in and you can tap in and it grips it and if you've cut your template right, I mean, we're nearly in there with our template. It's going to have a bit of a, a gap, I suppose. But we could use the croc sander now to exactly profile match that up if we want. I mean, the MIG's going to take up any, any slack. But that's an exact copy of the piece that we just took off. So there's no reason why it shouldn't... Uh, there it is there. No reason why it shouldn't go in exactly the same as it came out. I mean, obviously, my inner tab is bigger on this. I can trim that back down. It's o oversized. But... At the moment, I just want to get it to uh, to lock into place in terms of this. And that formed in quite easily, that shape. So we just get it to match everything, and then we'll tackle the slightly trickier section on this side. Okay? And that's what we'll do. I mean, you could have really, if you wanted to, split that and made actually a stagger join there, but I don't think it's necessary for what we're doing. So repair piece going in. I'll do a little bit more forming now freehand and just even get it to match up. But I'll just take you in with a camera so you can see that we're fixing that tub because it's worth saving. The tub is worth saving and this is almost the last of the rot. In fact, the last of the rot will be up on that gutter repair in the centre of your screen right now. I'll be the last. So we'll have an end of rot party. Woo! Let's get on and do this. Exciting stuff and going good. Let's get it really neat. Come on, we can do it. Okay, second piece of metal going in. We've just got to decide how high to make the cut. In other words, where the damage to this lip stops, around there. And then make sure I don't overcut. So I've just drawn a safety line on it. We're going to have an infill piece to go in here. So we're going to measure a point from there to there, lay it on the floor. That's going to give us the piece that we need. I'm going to turn the radio down for you. It's on a bit. Popmaster was on. Still on, Popmaster. I wonder if it copyrights Popmaster. Let's see if we can get Popmaster. Anyone play at home? I think Mike plays. We used to play. Mike was pretty good on it. Here we go. Can we do it? Mike was good on the Popmaster. I wonder if he's playing now. He used to get good scores. I'll let you know. Okay, second, repeat, second repair piece fits in nice and easy. Scribe these, I uh, painted these lines on, so that when I, now I'm going to spot weld these two flanges together. It's got to go in as two sections. This piece, it's got to go in first and be fixed. And then you slot that in there. Then we weld in down that side, and we're going to have to skim fill that to hide the join. Simply because I can't get it all in as one piece. I don't think it's going to fit. It's going to not manoeuvre uh, how I want it into position because you and i know on the other side when i put the tub in you've got a slot in from the top it could go but i might damage it it's, i think i'm just gonna 
repair weld that piece to that then I'm going to skim that in to hide the join I mean it's got to be skimmed in along here anyway to hide this repair so that tub goes across to the right what you pull that and it's then that seam join lines exactly up so I've un I've undercut this I've made a mistake at the top I'll have to put an infill piece at the back of it to uh, get that so one, one mistake but considering it's a bit of an intersection of panels I think it's going to look quite good. We've got a hole to put in it, an inspection hole gets drilled in there as well. Oh, all in all, I'm very pleased with how this is going so far. I'm going to take these two pieces out and spot weld them together there. Put some weld through primer on first. And then I'll get this piece fitted. And then after that, that piece is in, this then slots on top of it. And then uh, we're almost done. We need to repair this back flange edge a little bit clean up this join it's all corroded in there so I've split that apart so I can get in and clean it and then we'll prime inside that join and we can put the wheel tub back together okay so going well pieces out now for spot welding together and then some welding to do here we go wheel tub repair this piece out that piece is quite solidly wedged in it's not a one-handed job so this next okay quick cleaner for the uh... Okay, we're all locked in place, ready to make another cut. This overhangs here, that's because the copy panels will, will crock sand that into uh, flush with the edge of the sill end. There's a little fillet piece that's gone in there, which we're going to create the join with. And then we just need to cut out the rest of the metal now by getting a good accurate mark on here. And that's going to go in a flush fit that side with a little bit of a, a bump around where this join is. But we'll lose that, we should lose that with a skim should be on the whole pretty faultless and seamless repair to do we've got a plug weld in onto these end tabs these will spot weld on the outside like we did on the other wheel tub but this locating tag here needs to plug weld into that so we need to mark just there where we're going to be drilling it but the other piece overlaps it so we've got to be careful but you can work it out from this side where that uh, hole is that we're going to drill there we're really ready to do ready to do a cut on the tub itself now and finish that that, uh, that job and blend it in. So I'll weld this in position first. Then the other piece which is ready down here should slot in. Hopefully. We've just got to repair this edge. See that edge just wants a little bit of metal in that now. So I'm going to go and form a little piece of angle iron and just slot it in and get the MIG on that so we've got a nice face there to connect to. See here, just there. This metal sound, there's no, no degradation on that metal, there's no corrosion on that metal, so the rest of the tub's looking good. So with our butt clamps, we should be able to get the rest of the weld in there. And then finally, when it's all dressed up, we'll drill the whole inspection hole bung for the end of the sill that should be it then we'll decide if we're going to just graft a small piece in there and that means that we keep our curve and radius if you start taking all this out you end up with that problem where your quarter has to be adjusted exactly to fit it or this has to move in the right place if you do it this way you still got datums left and right so i'm going to insert a piece of metal there just i think that's the only compromised piece really on it uh, the rest of it is pretty good i mean that's still solid but i reckon that's the most heavily heavily pitted piece but it's it's 
50-50 that really because it is in good order. So I'm going to step back again to so you get a better perspective on what we're going on. Sometimes I'm a bit close up there. Alright, so those, those faces, they've had been cleaned back with a croc sander, then the weld through primer's gone on them so that they're ready. So you have to always clean the metal up, especially if the spot welder's going in there. Clean, clean, clean always for the spot welder to do its job properly. I must admit, this uh, repair here, I expected it to be quite tricky, but I'm really flying through it, so I'm pleased about that. This was always something in the back of my mind, thinking it's going to have to be tackled at some point, but it looks like we're, we're well on with it here. We could well be on with a good repair, and um, that'll be a big victory, because it means I can then carry on inside and finish off on the inside. And then that'll just take us to the, the tail end here, literally the tail end. And there, just two jobs. And that's the end of the rust. It's all then just reassembly of new panels that come in when they come in. Okay. I'm going to now repair this piece. Here we go. Okay. Sorry about the scruffy clothes. We have to get a wash on. We're getting rather dusty. Whoa! Now then. With the repair piece done, look at this, you like it? We've primed it and I've gone behind the back lip of the end of the sill, just here, and sanded that because I couldn't get the crocky in. That's got to be clean for the spot welds later on. But this is the piece which we uh, have been altering just slightly at the top of Philip piece to rectify my mistake. And actually it turns out that it uh, gives it some reinforcement, but this slot's in here like this. Oh, yeah, in that goes. Bring you in a little bit so you can see. There you go, we're on the selfie stick. What a great idea, why didn't I think of it before? Who knows? But it's so much easier to manoeuvre the camera around. You don't have to keep using the... Hold on a minute. Where's Joe? Ah, this is what you've probably never seen. Little magnetic feet and he keeps going bing when I've got the camera and you hear that noise. Anyway. I'm in the corner of the garage and mess is encroaching again, but progress is going good. This needs to go in there and get welded now, the welder's going to get ready any second. And once we get that welded, we get the uh, clamps on, here's our friends, the VUT clamps. We put them down that little edge just to help us, we'll weld this section in and then our super duper other piece that we've made. That then goes into there and we've, we've salvaged the wheel housing. And all we've got to do then is work our way to the back ear, ear, here, 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 here. It looks like an ear and it's here. It's not a hair, hair, here, here, hair, hair, here. It's a, you've got the Withnall and I reference. It's from Withnall and I, the film. Hair, here, 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 here. Cracking up. Fumes. Okay. Good thing about the selfie stick, you get some great pan shots. Boom, it's a new toy. And it's nothing new. So I can do whatever I want. So a little note on his big screen. We've got over we've got Mark, John, Andrew, Andy, Andy and Andrew, Mark, John, Mark Giles is out there, Giles is out there, Skulls is out there, Mark Skulls is out there. Little Newt, Gary Noggy. Lee Holmes, Simone, they're all out there, all the Patreons, John Lawson's out there, everyone's out there watching and we're hoping with a selfie stick we might get a few uh, different angles and variation in the filming. We won't overuse it but there you go, it's easier for me to film with it, I know that much, so I'd say why I've never used it before. Enough of that and on to this job, I've packed this little Put a packing piece in here just to make sure that the tub stays in line with the central spine there. It was tending to try and drift across because it lost its tension. Weld it is going on and this is going in. Okay, so here we are. Here, here, we, are. What? here we are fitting the BUT clamp. Tightening it up and you'll see how it draws the two panels with a 1mm gap between them. Keeps them flush. Keeps the piece square. Can you see that? I'll just bring you around the inside again. We have showed you these 
clamps before butt clamps all right and that's how they work look so you can see how we're going to get a nice um, flush fitting weld there with the exception of that little bracket at the top but my idea is when it's welded to take that bracket off okay at least at that point not at this lip edge I'm going to take it off from the back when the welds on that's my plan okay so I'm getting ready for some tacks you can see how, how nice that cut is already it starts to look like it's part of the wheel tub straight away wait till you see the rest of it let's go this is good I'm, I'm enjoying this make sure you wear a mask when doing galv in fact when doing all welding it's these cheap uh, 3M ones will do you good there's too many fumes and have the window open if you can much ventilation as you can don't underestimate the fumes especially galvanized fumes they're bad news you'll get uh, oh mate galvanized fumes you just don't want to know about it they're awful so get your mask on Okay, with a little bit of the crock sanding done, a little bit of uh, flat wheel disc on the angle grinder just to clean the welds up. The welds went nice and the plates have gone in good and the repair looks neat. Just shape that in round there, we'll put the spot welds in back along the, the, sip, the sill where they were missing. And then inside, we have a look, it's going to look neat inside, I think you'll agree. With a nice weld line and a nice neat repair from the inside some welds to grind back but the, the object was so that I could continue along the floor and up and that was stopping me from doing that so we've now got a good job out of the way so we can move on this what I'll probably do is get some of the Dinatrol metalized filler there'll be any tiny pins where the weld might have missed I've tried to get a seam but there's bound to be pins as we get better that becomes less and less but for now we'll uh, we'll put some Dinatrol metalized filler in there and then sand it straight and smooth the there is a little train spotter issue I suppose that line there tends to go too straight I think this would have had a slight curve just on that approach before it finally hits the sill so this bit would have had a slight curve in it now I could risk bashing it and put a little bevel in it it's just missing a scallop as this comes down on the radius then it goes straight it's just that bit there just annoys me a little bit um, you could strike that you could heat it with a gas and strike it but a risk risk damaging it's a gamble that one and um, when the seam sealer goes on this is all seam sealed you're probably going to lose it in fact you could cheat and build a scallop into it with the with the metalized filler I suppose I suppose you could do that and um, but considering uh, it's a couple of hours work and it's a big job done I think it's not turned out quite well I'm certainly happy with the quality of that so we can we can move away from that now and, and carry on inside the car now that uh, I can get there's no more welding happening here so I can finish inside the floor and then we'll get that tub cleaned at the back and just pushed up a little bit and then and connected back on to that run the rest of it as I said earlier isn't bad here's where it's compromised you can see under that light now so we're gonna can you see that them craters about to start going through so we'll cut here just under that line down there and we'll drop a piece in just to that area because the rest of it I'm, I can live with but what I might do is I'll dolphin glaze this so it's totally smooth you can see that that sort of uh, you pick it up better than I can there as opposed to that just starts to lose it I'm going to glaze that so it's totally smooth and then when we paint this it does it'll look nice if nothing else just for cosmetic reasons and there's a good photographic history of the build 
that tub will look, look nice and finished. This is very, very easy. A very straightforward piece of metal to go into here. So, so easy that repair. It's just going to be a doddle. And then we have then completed the tub. So all the questions in my mind about the tub and one day I'm going to have to tackle the tub on the car. It's over. It's over in the morning. Well, morning plus two o'clock in the afternoon now. So dinner time. Dinner troll. Uh, dinner troll. Dinner troll. I have something to eat. <laughs> dinner troll. Dinner time. Ooh. Ha <laughs> Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, with the leg, no, the cross member prepared, painted and treated and well frued, and the reinforcing plates in position here for the seat, we are now getting the measurements correct so that it's laying square in the pan because you can get some lateral twist. So I've measured from the corner of the parcel shelf tangs down to each corner, giving me 153 and 153 in that corner and then as a double check I went from this cross member to that one giving me 69.5 both sides which tells me that if this is square with the parcel shelf and the parcel shelf has never moved on the car and these measurements diagonally are the same from this corner to that corner and again from this corner to that corner if all those diagonals are the same it, it means that this seat cross member that we fit in is parallel to this and that this is parallel to that parcel shelf therefore all of those pieces are square and that we fitted this correctly so that's good if this was slightly out we would find discrepancy on the diagonal and indeed you can measure from that point you'll see where I've marked it to that point giving us a square seat base what you wouldn't want is to lay the seat on that and find that the seat front locating turn slightly was waving out forward because it wasn't square and indeed the seat may not sit on this squarely if you're gonna do it you may as well do it right so we've measured everything else there's no reason why we can't go ahead and start getting the plug welds on this now got some tech screws pushing it down into the floor already feeling rigid just on those tech screws time to fire up the welder I think you're in part 25 by now you know more than I do okay there's no reason we can't start plugging that and then we've got a bracket to fit, we mustn't forget. Well, it could have always been done later, but this is the exhaust hanger bracket and the top part of it, not the exhaust bit. Drills through the floor around that area there. It's uh, It could have been done a later date, but because the tar pads are going on, I want to get that bracket in place now because the tar pad partially covers it. Okay. So we need to prime that bracket, just make it so it's painted. Other than that, I can't see any reason why we can't finalise this. There's a floor bung to go in just there, a little bit of under seal, a seam seal to go on top of that floor bung before we can finally put the tar pads on. It's not totally essential to fit the tar pads at this point. The reason we were doing it was to reduce echoing and, and noise. Um, when we've been bashing on the car, you'd be surprised how quickly the noise starts to subdue. It's simply because I'm working with neighbours. They're all good, by the way. I speak to them regular, and make sure uh, that I'm not annoying them. And they said they don't even know I'm here, so that's good. But reducing drumming and also uh, the uh, tar pads went in because we wanted to. Um, give it a feeling of completion at the front but before I did 
fit the tarp pads. I tried to double, doubly, doubly make sure there wasn't any welding to do on the underside. The only welding I've got left is the gearbox mounting brackets, and that's why I've left the pad away around that area because we're having the A4 box, which requires mounts placed in a different position, albeit we're bolting them on this time uh, so that they're fully adjustable for reasons of prop shaft alignment. Uh, actually a flexible system that I'm building for it so they actually won't be getting welded to it but in case they were we left the tar pads off there the tar pads um, are in on this side as you know and as I say we could have fitted them at a later point but uh, we wanted to give it a feeling of completion and also when we took it the NEC we wanted to give it a bit of impact to show what's the potential and what's uh, what's in the pipeline I don't think it's a big deal but I've just said if that bracket goes in now it means we can put the tar pad in on top of it because it does slightly get covered by the, uh, the pad. Enough of that, let's get on with the plugs, this cross member. I'm always a bit apprehensive uh, when I'm just doing the final uh, install because you just think is there anything that I've missed once that's in it's too late and you just you just really really keep thinking it through. But we don't want to ramble on. That's the job of Led Zeppelin. So let's get this in position and welded. Okay, getting ready to weld then. I'm anticipating some fumes inside that cabin now simply because some of that pe um, paint's gone down. So we're going to use the ventilating mask. You've not seen this before. It's a new addition. Well, I've had it a while, but the battery pack was was broke and I got another one off Jim. Thanks for that. Not little new Jim, another Jim. And we can use this breathing pack, this albatross mask, good quality mask that one. Here's your air, air fed box. We've got a filter pack in there, new one. And that just force feeds air into the helmet there. I'm just concerned in here that there'll be some paint burn back. Uh, so I just don't want, I'm not taking any chances with any fumes, I'm really susceptible to them. We'll also open the door, we'll hear the blackbirds. So we'll be nicely ventilated, so something to bear in mind at home. Bear in mind if you can, ventilate, get a fan going in your garage, get your doors open if possible. If not, get plenty of ventilation going, don't enclose yourself in these, these fumes, and if you're grinding, Get a mask on for the uh, the fine dust particles that come off. We keep mentioning it, but it's important. Enough of that. I said I'd do this. That's well.
Okay, the sound pads go down, the cross members prepped, finished, primed and done and welded in. Time to get the sound mats in, cleaned up the floor and we're just ready to do the last of the sound mats. Already the shell sounds more solid, less echoey and uh, better to work on. So we'll get there, finish off this area just up to there. And then just pop a bit of paint onto this, just to freshen it up, see what we're looking like. And uh, we'll call that a day for today. Again, another full day on it. Surprise how long the cross member took just to prep, clean, uh, prime, then plug weld, grind back. And then I even uh, dolphin filled in the plugs, so it was a very nice run. You can just see we skimmed in them plugs, so you get a smooth finish. Indeed, that's reflected. In the fact when the sound pads go over they leave a smooth line rather than any rough welds or in indentations so just a little bit of detailing there for the sound pads okay so we can go as far as this cross member then i'm out of sound pads so we'll just do this quarter here this square and we're done so a little bit more on the heat gun just let it done gun i just let it Soften the pad up a little bit and then you can help it with your hand But it'll form itself. You mustn't get it too hot. You melt it, but see how that doesn't really want to go just yet It needs some assistance with the gun, the heat gun. So we do that So just leave that with me and we'll get some paint on this in a minute. So that's what we're doing. We're finishing off the floor We're done all at the top We're nice and good to go up there nothing else to weld everything complete so we're signing off the floor and i'm happy about that and and wow just in time i've just been to express panels to pick these bad boys panels up oh just and i mean the next day when i'd kind of like finished off doing this floor you just saw that it could have been in the last episode I'm not sure where we're up to again do I ever do I ever know where I'm up to anyway the next day after that was finished the call came through from Express to say your panels are ready so this is it this is it um, it's time to get these fitted here's the the super duper pressings and they all look good nice and sharp the boot floor it's a great pressing it's done in two sections because you can't get deep enough to punch in to get the wheel well so they make this band around it which is no problem we just have to fill that we get the body shop boys to do that they'll get it nice um, that's the only downside but the trade-off is you've got yourself a new old stock virtually as good as a Ford panel there and um, no no reason to think it won't fit we'll find out of course but um it's there and it's it's good quality so i'm happy with the panels they look good and i'm sure they're going to fit all right so i'm going to get right into it and put the uh, chassis legs on and then we're going to mock mock fit it up we do need to do that little lower edge repair on the end of the tub and a bit of cleaning up around that tub to do but i'd like to get stuck into this to, so i know what i'm up against and um, more because i'm just excited about it all so we're going to go straight into this now we're going to get the, the chassis legs on first we're going to weld them into here they need welding in we'll make sure that the measurements are right and then we'll rest the boot onto the legs and see how it starts to take shape we need to put the legs on to rest the boot onto it so we'll get some very good plug welds going on this for the chassis legs the extended legs that come out we'll put a, do a diagonal check on them and then we're going to get cracking okay here we go then for uh, Phase four, four, phase four, rebuilding the back of Bramble, the final stage, phase four, four and a half, stage five, say, is touching up and tidying up. So stage four, probably the penultimate body shell stage. Stage five is finalising stage, door gaps, little bits of uh, bits that need filling, little odd welds that we might have missed, braze points and stuff like that, but that's for five. This is phase four, you're in part 25. So um, it was nice if phase four was part 24, but I think part 24 there was that much went into this chassis. And I think we just, uh, it would have been a two hour 
episode. I'm trying to keep them to one hour. We do the odd two hour one if there's some bonus footage at the end. We'll see what happens anyway with that. But for now, look at these panels. Feast your eyes on those. Let's get cracking and get some chassis legs on. And we can then lower that floor onto the legs and see how it fits. Let's go. Okay, so we, we begin the alignment procedure. Quite exciting it is too to get to this stage of the build. Go back to our reference sheet then. Okay, and we're looking for the diagonal lines. Now I'm going to bring the diagonal lines right into the middle of your screen. All you people out there in Patreon land and YouTube as well. On your big screens, stream to your televisions. Hope you're sitting comfortably. Hello from Pete here. To everybody out there. Uh, thumbs up to you. Can't do that because I can't hold of the sheet. Uh, 167.7, 171.1 on the diagonal lines. And we explain why those are different and that it isn't a square in terms of the reference point because it dog legs round the fuel filler cap uh, spout this side. That's why them chassis legs aren't the same. One dodges round the, the filler cap for the petrol tank. So you get two different readings, although on the centre lines they are even. Okay, so we've got 167.2 and we've got 171.5. So that's the closest I'm going to get. I've jigged it around where it starts to feel uncomfortable fitting into the receptacles at the end of the chassis legs if you try and bring it in anymore. Now, the chassis legs have been both off, the floor pan's been out, so I'm going to go with that. And the main thing, the boot floor will sit we have a lot of movement. I'm about to try that and show you. So you can get away with moving it all the way. What you want, what you're looking for is the quarters fitting and the back fitting. These legs can, you can get away with a little bit on them. And you want to make sure that the bumper brackets holds line up with the pressings and the punched out holes on the uh, boot lid, which was what we're going to discover now. We've threaded the legs underneath there. I can tap that metal down there now. Tech screws holding it in then. Gone underneath, as I said, with the measuring points, you use this, this point here, this jig point, and there's another jig point on the chassis legs. We explained that earlier. There's the rear inner valance, and a great panel it is too. Nice, thick, solid metal, and a good, good sharp pressings from Express here. And looking round at the, the, the detailing on the panel, and it's nothing like you'd get off your your Veng days or your Hadrian days where they're very loosely pressed and, and you've got creases and this is sharp and a bit of attention to detail with the um, petrol tank strap reinforcing bars, I like that touch your access holes here for your underriders to get your socket through if you have underriders so great and then reinforcing panel here that creates a, um, a solid area on the outer lower valance so a great inner panel, really made up with that, the quality of that what an exciting time this is. Nice clean metal to work with everybody. What a great episode we're in here. And um, what we have to do now is lay the boot on top. Now, I've got it supported on a trestle. I won't be able to use that when we put the boot floor on because it'll interfere with the uh, wheel well. Um, so we're going to have to withdraw that for now. And just quickly mock up and just slide on the boot just to see where where we're at so i'll take this off here um the center line is one two three so dead easy to remember i'll write it down anyway that's the center line of the uh the back and we can if we want we can use the uh, the bumper we don't have to use that panel there i've just put that panel in as i tech screwed the uh, brackets because you can actually move those legs they're slotted into the the rest of the chassis but they will They'll go like that, and the tech screws, you want to really lock the tech screws in the position where they fit into the slots here that are cut out in this panel. Okay, so it's just a question of, of uh, getting it all right and mocking it up at first before we put any welds down. Okay, so we'll get on with this now. It might be prudent as well to, before we fix the floor, is to do this repair because we'll be able to get to it. Once this goes on, it's going to obscure this. So we may as well make life easy for ourselves. Take this back off, repair this, and then we'll, we'll do it. But for now, this is a mock-up. Okay, so I'm going to take it apart, and um, you'll see the boot going on. Okay, we're in, we're in with our first trial fit. What we do, 
off of the boot lid right up to that lip edge tech screw down just so it can't move and then see where it lays on the legs so we're not bad fitting around the arches you can see here there's a um, curiously and this arch hasn't been damaged or anything unless it has got a dent unless this is her uh, from a, a crash but this is I mean there's supposed to be a bit of a shape there but it looks like maybe that's that's actually got a dent in that arch so I would have said that would come out a little bit it looks like that may be damaged interesting it could have been damaged in the, in the dippers I just thought that was the shape that it's supposed to be but maybe it's more like this shape I'm inclined to agree that that's supposed to be there so this has got a dent in the arch in the tub so we can just bash that straight easily done I know it does have a bit of a scallop out here but maybe not that much so we knocked that out but I don't think that's a problem we're right up against that bulkhead that rear over axle bulkhead area and then we land virtually bang on on this leg and that's using those diagonal measurements to put the position of the leg in and you can see that I don't think we're going to be complaining about that a little bit of force needed just to get it exactly in the middle I'd rather things go in under tension anyway and you can see there that's where we are and we should be flush fitting with the leg onto the face of the boot which it more or less is yeah it's not even pushed down there you go so we're good there and we're meeting the tub properly in fact it's almost a, a perfect landing spot there onto the tub so I'm happy with the exact positions of that this side maybe a mil too far perhaps oh no you can get it look we're in we're in that's just once when I put the tech screw in to hold that I'll make sure I'm pushing forward on the boot floor so it's nice and tight against it so chassis legs then we're happy that that's where they go which means now we take the boot lid, a boot floor off, and weld the chassis legs up in the, in the position that they are. But before we do that, we'll brace them out at the back with the bumper bolts just to stop them moving when we weld it. So we can use that bumper there as a brace piece. So we'll bolt the bumper on, and that'll keep them from trying to pull inwards a little bit. If any weld goes, they're going to be braced in position for the, the exact 123 space in between them. So the boot tub can come off, the bumper goes on, then we weld on the legs where they are now because they're right. And then once we do that, we start to work out all the contact faces. So each panel connects to each, each uh, face there. And we then once we start to work out all the contact faces, we can then start applying the weld through primer. We'll be using the U-Pol 2 this time on all these faces. It's easier to apply and they're not heavy plug welds going in because they're all spot welds I like using the U-Pole when I've got my spots if it's heavy heavy welding and you think it's going to get really hot, hot thick layer of the uh, pink two pack weld through seems to perform a bit better initial fit then I'm pleased with there's no critical errors or anything like that whole thing's slanting down the car is on a slight incline backwards anyway so but I would imagine once you lock it you lift the whole lot comes up and the thing that's going to do that's going to be the quarter the quarter is going to dictate quite a lot of this all right so interesting times ahead of us but exciting ones it's time to get the legs welded on i'll do that next to get the welder rigged up put the bumper on as a bracing piece and then weld the legs in position
okay continue to mock up the setup here getting the rest of the panels in checking for levels now you can see the boot floor lies level which is interesting um, I must admit you learn something every day and what do we learn about Mark 3 core seatiness today and, and indeed probably Mark 4s and 5s most likely be the same well, this is what I learned those chassis legs that you just saw me welding on were on the slope downwards so they were they come out of the car and slope down and I'm thinking somehow with my chassis legs something's gone wrong and they're pointing downwards and when it comes to the welding time I'll just pull them bend them back up so that they're straight on the spirit level and I thought there's no way I can do it they're actually they, they fit snugly in and then the plug welded in and they don't want to bend up it just seemed wrong they were just not for bending up they were starting to crease I thought this can't be right something's not right here and they actually point down can you believe that them chassis legs I don't know if we can see them you've seen them enough times anyway but there they are and they point downwards and so you think well the boot floor points they'll point down it's just gonna the boot floor is gonna be like this which I know they're not I know that the flat well guess what look at the boots pressing the boot pressing's taller there and narrows off there to compensate for the fact that the chassis legs point downwards how weird is that so by the time you fit the boot floor it levels itself out but if you if you check the level on your on this panel you get that which is exactly what I was getting on the chassis leg put it onto the boot and you bang in the middle so I was uh, fussing over nothing I was worrying over nothing until I realized how it worked and I tell you what you wouldn't have spotted it if you weren't looking the last thing you're going to be doing is, is saying the boot actually offsets itself and that you these panels in your Cortina are on the slope I would never have known that you learn something every day it's been a long day today it's eight, eight o'clock so I'm going to finish and um, carry on with a mock-up tomorrow but everything seems to fit so this is just the first trial fit but everything seems to work I like the way everything's coming together look at this that just goes into there like that follows it and it's at the right height everything seems okay it looks like everything's going to be easy to spot weld some stuff will have to be plug welded the boot lip along the edge will have to put plenty of holes in that edge and plug into there have to be careful with that because that uh, receiving piece of metal that we grafted in won't take lightly to uh, heavy migging um, it's very thin so I'll have to be careful anyway I could even reinforce that to be fair I'll tell you what I might do I might spot weld a reinforcing strip on it to give a good plug weld maybe with something we can do there's that back inner panel there uh, roughly clamped in position then here's our upper panel upper rear that goes in the middle there and then you've got these quarter finishes shot blast about their new ones what will pull the boot up I mean at the moment the boots resting on this trestle on a block of wood if I pull it off it starts to flex and you can get a bit of you can you can wobble your boot and indeed that's what happens when you chop a cortina up as soon as you chop the quarters the boot starts to wobble downwards it crushes in on the arches there the arches are put sort of acting as a, a stop but there's not enough strength if you push hard you, you collapse the arch there and you bend your boot and um, the thing that holds it all together is the quarters as soon as the quarter goes on we'll be probably pulling this up into the quarter area and it'll lock together lock to that quarter will form a bond between there and this corner oops and this corner so uh, the strength again would be in these corners but I'm impressed with how it's gone I must admit considering there's only one error it's not really an error it's just that here there's a um, this very tight uh, gap between the chassis leg and the um, wheel tub that's where I fitted the chassis leg it needs a chisel to just open it up so that you can slot that little edge of the boot floor into it that's about the only thing that, that's easy to do at least it'll be a nice snug fit when it drops into position so I'll call it a day for now so I'll just uh, 
good little bit of footage today. We went and picked up, that took up half the day, at least four, three hours of the day. We went and picked up the parts this morning and then this afternoon, I've come, I had things to do today, but this afternoon, this evening, I've come in to mock it up and that's what we've got in, in a couple of hours. So quite good fun and no more messy grinding. It's all like a Meccano set time now, so that'll be good. I'll see you tomorrow for you. It's a few more minutes. See you in a sec.